concentration and attention. Okay, so here's the deal. A couple of years ago, I did some research on the topic of concentration. I always had a weird relationship with it. When I was alone in my room studying, I had no problem sitting through a chapter of a book. When I was sitting at campus, I couldn't finish two sentences. Do I have problems concentrating? Yes, but in another way you might think. In this video we discuss the following topics. What is attention? What is concentration? What are distractions? And how do distractions affect concentration? Attention. William James wrote that everyone knows what attention is. It is the taking possession by the mind in clear and vivid forms of one out of what seems several simultaneously possible objects or train of thoughts. Focalization, concentration of consciousness of its essence. It implies withdrawal from some things in order to deal effectively with others. John Anderson recognized attention as the allocation of limited cognitive processing resources. In other words, our brain has a limited power supply. Everything we do claims some of it until depleted. And before I am causing an overload in some brain's power supply, let's start easy and we shall take a look at an example. Imagine you are driving in a car on a wonderful scenic route, like some serpentines down a mountainside. Cruise about 10 km per hour, enjoying the wonderful scenery, counting all the sheep in the field and steering your vehicle joyfully around every curve. Each of these tasks takes brain power, but they are not very demanding. We have enough capacity to process them all together. And now imagine the car is broken and will constantly accelerate to 100 km per hour. So how many sheep were on the way down? Driving is suddenly not an easy task anymore. There is no room for screw-ups. We have to pay attention to the road and make decisions as fast as possible or otherwise we are faster down than we'd like. When driving with 10 km per hour, our brain can make decisions on the fly because it can easily process all of the incoming data. When speeding down the hill, we have to allocate all of our brain power to the driving. It is simply put 10 times more difficult now. We must not pay attention to anything else. We have to concentrate. But what is concentration exactly? Concentration. Aiden Moran wrote, Concentration is an attentional process that involves the focus on the task at hand while ignoring distractions. It is also described as an individual's capacity to choose what to pay attention to and what to ignore. In our example, we have a wide array of tasks. Driving, over counting sheep, to admiring the landscape. If we want to concentrate now solely on the driving, we consciously make the decision to ignore all other tasks in order to free more power we can then allocate on said task. When we begin to pay attention to something we are not supposed to, or our mind just simply starts drifting off, we have difficulty with or lack of concentration. If we are able to cut out many or strong stimuli, we have a good concentration. Here's an advice. Not everybody has the same ability to concentrate. It is not an innate skill we all get assigned at our character creation. We can train concentration, yes, but did anyone teach us how that works? I will in the next episode. For the sake of the next thought experiment, we consider a situation in which all people are equally as untrained. Voluntary distractions. Let's conduct an experiment. We put a test subject in an isolated soundproof room. Besides a table and a chair, the room is empty. On the table are two items, a jigsaw puzzle and the subject's phone. We tell the subject to finish the puzzle, then observe. The person starts to puzzle eagerly and makes good progress. And after a while though, the puzzling becomes sluggish and the subject shows signs of distress. We can see the subject reaching for their phone, but halts in their motion and come back to the puzzle. They were tempted to check their phone because they lose interest in the puzzle. But they refocus and continue their task. Some time passes and the person enters a state of distress again. This time, they succumb to the urge and check their phone. This scenario is what I describe as voluntary distraction. The person, quote unquote, chooses to abandon the assigned task in order to pay attention to something else. Reason for this behavior can be manifold. Maybe the subject considers the task being boring, tedious or too hard. Simply put, it is not motivating enough to keep it to priority. If we do something boring, our brain is bored. Its capacity is not utilized, only a small amount of processing power is allocated and the rest is idle. We begin to look for something more interesting, something to fill the void, and in our case the phone. 
In the example of the car, this would be driving with 10 km per hour and trying to ignore everything but the road. If a task is too difficult, our brain works in overdrive, trying to use more capacity than available. Like doing complex calculations without any tools. Our brain says, screw this, abandons the task and looks for something more suited. Think about doing something you really enjoy. Like sports, art or playing an instrument or a game. When you are in the zone enjoying yourself, do you ever think about doing anything beside what you're doing in this moment? Concentration in the form of coping with voluntary distractions manifests for me in the ability to withstand the temptation of more interesting stimuli. Here's an example. In university I attended a lecture about game theory. It was super interesting to me and I had no problem paying attention and following every word that was being said. Some of my friends on the other hand constantly borrowed my notes because all they ended up with was a pad full of scribbles. But I borrowed in return their notes for finance and tax law because I was too busy labeling every box on a squared DNA4 paper. It was about 2400 something and yes. You have to write very small. In the end, our concentration level were about equally as shitty. We did not pay attention in our respectively boring lectures. If our concentration regarding voluntary distractions were higher, we'd been able to write our own notes, despite the fact that we did not care about the subject matter. Addendum. We consider the task we are trying to concentrate on what we are supposed to do. Saying. I cannot concentrate on the game because I constantly have to think of the chores I should rather do does not count. Involuntary distractions. Whereas voluntary distractions origin within ourselves, involuntary distractions are of an external nature. We conduct a puzzle experiment once more, but this time we place the test subject in a windowed room with poor acoustic insulation. And additionally, we place an ominous second phone on the table. The person starts to puzzle and we start to distract. First, we flick the light switch a couple of times. Second, we ring the mysterious phone. Third, we send someone to bang on the window and shout. This should paint a clear picture of what I mean with involuntary distractions. Even if the person gives their best to focus on the task, they might get startled at some point and lose their concentration without them consciously deciding so. And even when participating in your favorite activity, while being in the flow, a person engulfed in flames yelling HELP should catch your attention. Keeping the voluntary distractions at bay falls under the category of concentration, as we stated. No matter the given situation, we actively decide if we really want to grab our phone or stare outside the window. Involuntary distractions is not that simple to classify and requires additional discussion. Threshold and filter. Threshold. People react differently to involuntary distractions. Sure, human touch will most likely catch everybody's attention, but generally some are more sensitive to sensory inputs than others. Meaning they register and process, for example light, sound, smell, touch, earlier and more deeply than others. Whether a person reacts to an input is determined by what I call threshold. You can compare it to a voice activation function in Discord or TeamSpeak. In order to start broadcasting your voice to the chat, your vocal output has to surpass a certain volume. If you whisper or are too far away, you are too quiet, therefore stay under the threshold and the other chat participants won't be able to hear you. In our context, the threshold is the point when our brain decides, hey that is interesting, let's pay attention to that, and allocate some brain power to the causing input, probably disrupting our concentration. Some people have a high threshold and we have to yell at them in order to gain their attention. Others can hear a mole 3 meter below the ground take a dump. Here's a story. One time as a kid I needed help with my homework, so I decided to ask my dad for help. I went to his office, stood in front of him and asked, Hey dad, can you help me with something? Dad? FATHER! Chalk he rose up staring at me like I'd appeared out of thin air, risen from the ashes of the long fallen. I always thought he was messing with me, there's no way he did not hear me, walking up the stairs, stride across the hallway, knock on the door, open it and standing right in front of him. Filter. When we want to concentrate, we make use of an inner filter function. We decide what we want to pay attention to and what inputs we want to cut out. This filter is an additional effect we consciously activate to raise our threshold, like a noise gate. We now ignore inputs we usually would respond to. This filter is added to our natural threshold and makes our 
concentration threshold for external distractions. This filter, like the threshold, varies from person to person. There might be someone who can just flick a switch and instantly blocks out everything. But there could also be someone who just manages to ignore the air conditioning. A broken concentration does therefore not have to be a person's inability. The concentration threshold could be very low and they are being involuntarily distracted by what others can filter out without any problems. End of part 1. And that's it for part 1 of this video. In part 2, we will take a look at ways we can manage and even improve our concentration for involuntary as well as voluntary distractions.